Good morning, everyone. Another great day here in Manatee County. Thank you for everyone attending this morning. I'd like to call to order uh, the Thursday, April 4th land use meeting to order. And what we're going to do this morning, as we always do, is that we recognize our God and our great nation. And this morning we have Pastor Ralph Honan from the Source Church will give our invitation. And Marine Corps Combat Veteran Commissioner Jason Bearden will give our pledge. If anyone could please rise. Thank you. Father, thank you for this opportunity of getting together. Father, thank you for these commissioners and their commitment to Manatee County. Lord, I pray that you would bless them and bless their families. And Lord, I pray that you just give them wisdom as they make decisions here on behalf of the people of this great county. Lord, I pray that you would just bless them and give them uh, wisdom and help them to work alongside everybody. And Lord, that we would see peace in our community and that we would just see you working divinely on all of our behalfs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Commissioner Bearden. Thank you for your service. Ms. Knapp. Are there any changes to the agenda? Good morning, Commissioners. Um, all changes were included with yesterday's mid, uh, midday update. All right. Thank you very much. Up next, what we would like to do is we have always have a citizen's comment on future agenda items. This, uh, you will have three minutes. We ask that you come up, state your name and your county residence. This will go for about 30, uh, max of 30 minutes or until we run out of public speakers. So if you'd like to come up this morning and, uh, have, and speak... Please come on. Let me see. We got the. Where is this on my agenda? There we go. And first up, we have. We have to wait your turn, ma'am. Well, I got to call the registered speakers up first. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, first up, we have Brenda Jabro. Is that how you pronounce it, ma'am? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'd like to talk about the Creekwood Roundabout Project. Um, Ma'am, could you please state your name and county residence? Oh, my name is Brenda Jabro. Um, I'm a Manatee County resident. Um, I'm a homeowner of the Creekwood community, and I'm concerned about the Creekwood Roundabout Project. Um, this project will have significant impact on the Creekwood community. The site of this project will have effect on the retention ponds, which help with our water runoff during heavy rains, and with our native Florida birds and wildlife habitats, which live in and around these ponds. There is no promise that there will even be a 15-foot barrier with this project. The majestic trees which have been there for generations will be affected, and again, this will also result in homes of our native birds and wildlife being displaced. Um, I think we all know project is inevitable, but to not look for alternatives that will work better for both our community and our environment that we all live in is not progress. So I hope that all of you at least take a drive by there, see where this project is going, and then make a decision. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Captain Thomas Carter. Sir, state your name, county residence, and you have three minutes. Thomas Carter, Manatee County. I'd like to talk to you about what would happen if this project would go through on the steps you have to do through condemnation. And first, I want to bring up the pictures of what Brenda was just talking about, where this project would go. You'll see the pond on one side. There are the stakes. That's where the roundabout's going to go. The pond on the other side, there are the stakes in the water. And I just don't understand how that's going to happen. And the steps through land acquisition or through condemnation. You'll have to go down. The first one is notice of intent. It was never sent out, so it's a violation. So when we go down to steps of condemnation, you're going to go to violation, 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 till you get down to the government might, government might also violate the landowner's rights through regulation. This is called regulatory mm -hmm. taking. It's more expensive than just condemnation. So I just wanted to thank you for reading that paper and what you're going to be up against when you do have to go to regulatory taking and it won't be me speaking to you to be my attorney thank you sir 
Right, thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Will you please hand those pictures over to the clerk? She just needs to make record of them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That would be the end of our uh, signed up speakers. So if anyone out in the audience would like to come forward and speak, you would have three minutes. Please state your name and your county of residence. So come on up. Hi there. Um, I am a Manatee County resident. My name is April Colbreth. I wanted to come and address the board today about our 211 system that we have in Manatee County. I watch all the board meetings and I watch the surrounding county board meetings as well because I feel like we can learn a lot from our surrounding counties. And I was watching a couple weeks ago a Sarasota County board meeting where a Sarasota County commissioner brought forth that the 211 system that they use in Sarasota County refers callers who are in distress about certain issues such as abortion and their pregnancies, they refer them to Planned Parenthood. So that concerned me that that was right there in Sarasota. I know we don't have any clinics here in Manatee County, but when I started looking into it, I learned that we also use that same 211 system. So I've been, I'm, I'm retired now, but I was with the Manatee County Sheriff's Office for almost 27 years. So I did a little deep dive investigation and clicked a couple buttons and I learned that if you click on their page, the, there's, there's, I'll give it to the clerk, but there's multiple, multiple, um, over 25 sites that refer you over to Planned Parenthood. So that was kind of a concern to me, knowing that most of our conservative board up here had made a proclamation a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half or so ago, that we would not give any Manatee County taxpayer money to any organizations that refer to or use Planned Parenthood, and, and this is one of them. So I was just hoping to bring that to your attention, and hopefully you guys can look into it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your comments. All right, is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak during public comment? you got to come forward. No, you, you need to come forward to the podium and state your name and your county residence and, and on future agenda items. I'm sorry? On a future agenda item. Nothing, yes. on, nothing that has anything to do with today. Uh, the, the Palm View uh, project that's going. That, that's, on the, that's on the agenda. Okay. okay. So that'll be coming up, sir. Oh, okay. So you can speak at that point. Yes, sir. Thank you. On any future agenda item, is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak and give public comment? All right. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Are there any citizens that would like to come forward and speak on any of the consent agenda items? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close consent public comment. Um, are there any items, would any commissioners like to remove any items from consent? Okay. Then, moving forward, sorry, I got from my page. All right, so then we'll move forward and go to well, Mr. Chair, yes. if I may, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 thought, I thought one of the commissioners to my right or my left was going to jump in. So after the Planned Parenthood comments, so I didn't put myself on the board. Um, but I mean, are we just going to, we're just going to slide right past that or, or what? I, I was unaware no, I mean, of the that's, fact that, you know, I mean, I, I'd we, like to know how much money we're giving to, to the two. I think it's United Way that runs it. I could be wrong. I don't mean to throw them uh, out there. Sorry. Okay. I, I'm not sure who runs it, uh, the 2 one system. But I'd like to know how much we're giving, okay. to whom we're giving it, um, and if, if the, the comments are true or not. Uh, so if staff could get us at least that information. I mean, by the, we should be able to get that by the end of this meeting, I would hope, uh, so that we can discuss it further at the conclusion of the meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. That's why we. Thank yeah, you, sir. Um, I believe that um, I agree. County Administrator and Director DePaulo could probably pull that information up pretty quick um, and find out what our total contribution is annually to... Um, 211, and I believe it goes through uh, United Way, Suncoast United Way. So I believe they could pull up pretty quick. So I'm sure that county administrator is listening right now. So we would ask him to have that information ready for us by the end of this meeting. Thank you very much. Um, what I'll do is look to, um, now uh, if we can get a motion on, on consent. Motion to approve. 
Uh, thank you, Commissioner Turner. Thank you, Commissioner Bearden. So we have a, a motion to approve consent by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bearden. Uh, we're waiting for that to come up on the to vote. So if you'd cast your votes now. All right, co consent is moved six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. All right, now we'll move into the next section of the land use meeting to advertise public hearings. This is um, presentation upon request. What I'd like to do is ask the clerk right now to swear everyone in. If you're going to speak today, or you think you're going to speak today, or you have an intention of speaking today, this is quasi-judicial. We would ask that you would please stand and be sworn in by the clerk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Knapp, can you please read item 12 into the record, please? Item number 12 is ZL 2328 Jones 301 Parish Rezone Jones Potato Farm, Inc. This is a rezone of approximately 4.68 acres from Agricultural Suburban Parish Commercial Village Overlay to Village Limited Parish Commercial Village Overlay Zoning District on the eastern portion of a 10.7 acre parcel and generally located along the east side of US 301 North, south of State Road 62, and 1,000 feet north of County Road 675 in Parish, and approving a schedule of permitted and prohibited uses as voluntary proffered by the applicant and attached as Exhibit B. Your staff presenter, should you need one, is Ms. Rosina Leiter. All right, thank you. What, is there anyone that would like to have a presentation on this item? Okay, thank you very much. What I do is like to ask for any, any public comment regarding item 12. Seeing none, a close public comment. I'd like to look for a motion to approve item number 12. Mr. Chair, just with ex parte. Oh, sorry. Is there any, any ex parte? No, sir. All right, thank you. The motion's been made to approve by Commissioner Satcher, moved by Commissioner Bearden. If you'd all please cast your votes now. And the motion carries six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. Ms. Knapp, can you read item 13 into the record? Item 13 is PDO 2331ZG. Um, Gat Utso Rezone, and this is a rezone of approximately 0.88 acres, generally located west of North Tamiami Trail, east of the Intercoastal Waterway, and approximately three quarter miles south of Telavas Road, Sarasota, from Residential Duplex District 3. Whitfield Residential Airport Impact Overlay to Plan Development Office Zoning District, retaining the Whitfield Residential and Airport Overlay Districts and approving a general development plan, which adds 5,500 um, 5, square feet to the first floor and a 2,900 square feet second story addition to the existing 4,600 um, square foot single story building for a total of just over 13,000 square feet of residential support facility. And your staff presenters, should you need one, is Chris Claypack. Okay. Are any commissioner? Well, first, are there any, been any ex parte? No. All right. Thank you very much. Would any commissioners like to have this presentation done? All right. Thank you. Is there any public comment regarding item number 13? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment, and I will look for a motion. And there's been a motion made by Commissioner Turner, seconded by Commissioner Bearden. If you could please cast your votes now. And the motion carries six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Ms. Snap, can you read num item number, it says? It skips to 15, because we ordered. Yeah, it's uh, item 15. Which comes after 13. <laughs> yes. <laughs> New math. <laughs> this is Z2312, Saltzman Distribution Substation, Peace River Electric Corporate, Inc. This is a rezone of approximately five acres, generally located 3,600 feet north of the intersection of Moccasin Walla Road and US 301 North. On the west side of US 301, uh, North Parish from planned development residential to suburban agriculture and your staff presenter should you need one is Ms. Loretta Merrill. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anybody in ex parte? Seeing none. Thank you. Does anyone like a presentation? Seeing none. I'll ask for public comment. Seeing no public comment, I'll close public comment and I'll look for a motion to approve or a motion to be made. Motion was made by Commissioner Cruz, seconded by Commissioner Turner. If you please cast your votes now. And the motion carries six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. Now we're moving on to presentation scheduled.
<coughs> Ms. Knapp, can you please read item 14 into the record, please? Item 14, PDR 2315ZG, Mia Bello Palmetto. This is a rezone of approximately nine acres, generally located along the south side of 49th Street East and east of 16th Avenue East in Palmetto from residential single family two and res, um, residential single family six to plan development residential zoning districts and approving a general development plan for 30 single family detached residential units. And your staff presenter is James McDevitt. All right, thank you. Commissioner, is there any, any ex parte? No. All right, thank you. Applicant, you're up. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, for the record, I'm Scott Rudisell. I'm here on behalf of the applicant on the Mia Bella project. Uh, this is our project team. Uh, we have with us Todd Pressman uh, with Pressman Associates, uh, Brian Blazewick with Native Engineering, Michael Yates is our traffic engineer, and we have Dale Merriman here um, for environmental. All right, this is a location map. The project site is approximately 9.1 acres located on the south side of Experimental Farm Road, uh, just east of 16th Avenue East. And this is a this is a closer look at the site. And this is your zoning map for the area. This site is a combination it has res or RSF 6 along um, Experimental Farm Road and then it has um, RSF 2 on the remainder of the site. Similarly, on the future land use map, uh, it is Res 6 to the north and Res 3 to the south. Uh, this is just a development trends map showing kind of what's going on in this area. You can see there are several residential projects and also some Euclidean residential zoning areas here. So it is a predominantly single family residential um, area. And this is the proposed GDP. Uh, it is for a maximum of 30 single family detached lots. Density is right at 3.3 dwelling units to the acre, which is in line with the combination res six and res three that's planned for this site. Um, this project is meeting all the requirements for your buffering. It's got a 20 foot roadway buffer. It's got a 15 foot uh, perimeter buffer. The applicant is also providing fencing around the perimeter of the site. There is an existing drainage ditch that runs along the eastern boundary and along the southern boundary. Uh, and the applicant is providing the required drainage and access easements to the county uh, related to that. And this is just a concept plan to show what, what the 30 units might look like put into lots on the site. Uh, there is one specific approval request. It is the request to uh, reduce the secondary front yard setback from 25 feet to 10. That concludes the, the presentation. Uh, this project did receive a unanimous recommendation of approval from the Planning Commission, and we're respectfully requesting your approval. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Is there any questions from any of the commissioners? All right. Thank you, sir. Staff, you're up. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, James McDevitt with Manatee County Development Services, and I have been sworn. Mr. Rudisill did a great job of presenting what the project is proposing today. I'm going to give you a little more detail as to why we landed on the density of 30 dwelling units. So here are the aerials that we showed before. The main category, future land use categories here are Res 3 and Res 6, allowing for three and six dwelling units per acre, respectively. The zoning is existing, but they're changing to PDR. And their proposal is for 30 single family detached dwellings. The existing conditions is really where the density calculation comes into concern here. There's approximately 3.08 acres of wetland on site which is approximately a third of the site. So the comprehensive plan has a wetland development transfer credit. It allows for a density or an intensity transfer. And since this is a lot of verbiage, I've selected the few words that are really important to this project. 
It limits the wetland acreage less than or equal to 20% of total project acreage as a transfer. And there are limitations on the gross and net density as established per each land use category and is required to be in compliance with all other land development code regulations. And in the land development code, seven, section 706.9 is the implementing section. And again, that's a lot of verbiage, so I've trimmed it down. Thank you. <laughs> The main focus here is a limitation on credit. The alteration or relocation of jurisdictional wetlands shall be minimized by limiting the density credit to 50% of the maximum density. And this is in addition to the 20% exceeded by the comprehensive plans policy. So here again are our future land use categories and I've, bro I've provided the gross acreage per future land use as well as the wetlands within each of those. So there's a lot of math that goes into this part it's really just trying to de determine what the maximum de density can be on this site. Uh, so the first question that we're having to ask is, is a transfer required, a transfer calculation required? The res six has 17%, which is less than 20, so that does not require a transfer credit calculation. But the res three does have 41%, which is obviously larger than 20, so the calculation is required. And here are the steps. We take the gross acreage, less out the wetlands, find out what the upland acreage is. We take the upland acreage and 10% because this project is proposing impacts. So if there were no impacts, they'd get the full 20, but because the impacts are proposed, they get 10%. And we get the calculable acreage. Then we multiply the calculable acreage by the future land use density, which in this case is res three, and we get 12.72. And then to find the total, we take the res 3, 12.72, and multiply or add to the 2.9 times 6 of 17.4, and we get 30.12. And that's how we determine the maximum density for this site. Mr. Rudisil did touch on the specific approval, the reduction of the second front yard from 25 to 10 feet. We have positive, negative, and mitigating measures here. The sanitary sewer and potable water facilities are available by connection, and the Res 3 and Res 6 future land use categories anticipate this type of development. The negative aspect is the proposal is impacting 100% of the existing wetland. The mitigating measures are that the maximum 10% development transfer credit that I just explained has been applied here. The applicant must identify a focal point per section 4027D4. And they have provided adequate buffering setbacks and separation from uses adjacent to the project. With that, staff finds this project proposal to be in compliance with the Land Development Code and the Comprehensive Plan. And I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, of, just, yes, sir. Commissioner Cruz. Sorry. Yeah, can you just, we, we talked about this on the, the briefing, and you all explained it to me. Uh, can someone on staff just explain, you know, we talked about the wetland because 100% of it's being affected, but it's uh, a poor quality wetland, a lot of, and, you know, a lot of the plants, so forth. So can someone just explain because, you know, we are working over the entirety of the wetland, but there is going to be mitigation credits. There is a quality of wetland that, that's factored into this discussion. So just for public sake, can someone explain how you explained it to me that got me comfortable? We'll have Kara come up to explain. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Care canning for staff, and I have been sworn. So as discussed in the briefing yesterday, it is a very low quality wetland. Um, it's filled with around 95% nuisance exotics. So with this site, they'll have to um, mitigate through the water management district, and they're proposing to pay into a mitigation bank. So in theory, they're doing the required mitigation, and that'll be followed through with the environmental resource permit process. Sure. So, Kara, the environmental okay. report illustrates that the avoidance and minimization required, correct? Yes, absolutely. They provided a full wetland impact study, um, and it went through the 706 uh, minimization criteria for the impact. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Thank you very much. What we'll do now is open this up for public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to give public comment regarding this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and we'll close public comment, and we'll go to any other closing, any other questions for staff or the applicant? Seeing none, closing comment. Staff, you good? Mr. Roussel, you good? All right, thank you very much. So we'll look 
All right, so we have a motion on the board by Commissioner Cruz and a second by Commissioner Turner. If you could please cast your votes now. And the motion carries six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. All right, Ms. Knapp, can you read item 16 into the record, please? And that comes after 14. <laughs> Item 16 is PDR 2336ZG, Hine Rutland Road, PDR, Manatee Property Limited. This is a rezone of approximately five acres from General Agricultural to Plan Development Residential Zoning District, generally located approximately 1.25 miles east of um, US 301, south of Rutland Road 675, and east of 136 Terrace East Parish, and approving a general development plan for a maximum of 15 single-family residential detached, attached, and semi-detached dwelling units. And your staff presenter is Kevin Oman. Thank you very much. Has there been any ex parte regarding item 16? All right, seeing none, thank you. All right, applicant, it must be your day. <laughs> I'm going to hand this over quickly. You've heard from me enough. Uh, but for the record, I'm Scott Rudison. Here today on behalf of the applicant, um, uh, Charlie Hine is here. He's the he's the property owner of this site. Uh, we also have Rhea Lopez, who's an AICP planner with RVI. I'm going to hand it over to her shortly. Uh, we have uh, Victor Barbosa is our civil engineer with Atwell. Uh, Jason Utley is here for transportation, and Carrie McNutt for environmental. Um, as was mentioned, this is a proposed uh, rezone from A to PDR for a maximum of 15 single-family units. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rhea. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Scott. Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Rhea Lopez with RBI Planning and Landscape Architecture, and I have been sworn. Uh, right. So the site that we're looking at today is a five-acre property that is located just south of Rutland Road and to the east of 136 Terrace East. Um, the site has frontage on two roadways, as you can see on the aerial map. It is currently developed with five residential dwelling units, which is a legal non-conforming density per its zoning. The future land use is Urban Fringe 3, and the existing zoning is General Agricultural. The site is located in an area that is rapidly transitioning from agricultural uses into suburban development. This map shows just the current development project layer on GIS, where you can see there's a number of planned development approvals in the area. Most importantly, just immediately north of the site is the Salt Meadows PDR, which is approved for 561 uh, single-family dwelling units. Our request today is to rezone the property to plan development residential. We are seeking a maximum of 15 homes. This is at a gross density of three dwelling units to an acre, which is what is permissible under the UF3 future land use category. The home types will be, will be restricted to single family unit types, including single family detached, attached, and semi-attached unit types. We are specifically restricting multifamily development to be consistent and compatible with the surrounding areas. Similarly, height will be restricted to two so stories maximum. We are also providing for perimeter buffering in accordance with the LDC or in enhancement of the requirements of the LDC. This is a graphical representation of how the site would lay out. We will be required to provide right-of-way reservation along Rutland Road, which is a thoroughfare roadway. We will then be providing 20-foot roadway buffers along Rutland Road, as well as 136 Terrace East. We will be also required to provide 10-foot green bells along the other project boundaries. We have proposed to enhance the width of the greenway, green belt buffer to the south, and this is because it is adjacent to the cemetery, and we heard that in terms of public input at the neighborhood workshop. Besides that, residential tracks will be laid out, and of course, we will manage stormwater on site. We are also required to provide 25% open space within the project, which will be provided in the form of the stormwater pond, as well as additional open space for the enjoyment of the residents. As you can see on this map, the future land use of this site, as well as the surrounding areas, is Urban Fringe 3. 
This allows for a density of three dwelling units to an acre. So the maximum attainable density on this five acre property is 15 dwelling units, and that is what we are seeking today. Our application includes one specific request approval, and, and that is for, again, uh, secondary front yards, reducing that setback from 25 feet to 10 feet. There is public facilities available in this area to serve the property. This is in terms of traffic, utilities, fire, as well as EMS. School concurrency is um, assessed at the time of FSB. The project is consistent with the Manti County Comprehensive Plan. This is in terms of being consistent with the Urban Fringe 3 future land use category provisions in terms of density, the range of permitted uses, as well as the intent as well as several other provisions within the comprehensive plan, including adding to development in an area with public facilities and services, increasing density west of the established future development area boundary, compatibility with existing development as the area transitions from agricultural uses, as well as um, limiting urban sprawl through cluster development. So in conclusion, the project that we have before you today is consistent and compatible with the surrounding land use pattern. There is available infrastructure to support this growth. The site includes sensitive site design elements for protection of views from adjacent roadways as well as properties. It is consistent with the Manatee County Comprehensive Plan as well as the Manatee County Land Development Code. And finally, we have had our hearing before the Planning Commission, and they had recommended approval of this project. So with that, I will conclude our presentation, and we respectfully request for your vote of approval. My team and I are here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Is there any questions for the applicant <coughs> from the commissioners? <coughs> yeah, Commissioner Turner. Oh, there it is. It's on. One quick question with the... Um, you know, sensitive to the site design. The only comments that I was aware of anyways from uh, neighbors would be just the access point. Is that flexible within the design, the access point? Yes, and, and that was a discussion that we did have at Planning Commission. And since that meeting, we have, you know, as an applicant team looked at the site and, you know, I, I can, it was asked at Planning Commission and we've assessed this, but if we move our access location um, it would not affect our density. So that's something we, we would be open to. Uh, we've also met with staff, and they, too, agree that the design of this GDP is schematic at this time, so there is flexibility to move the access point. And, and you know, so when we have detailed engineering information at PSP, FSP, that's something that we are willing to look into in further detail and, you know, move that access point as needed to uh, ensure, again, compatibility with the neighbors. But while also preserving traffic safety from the Rutland Road intersection. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions of the applicant? All right, thank you very much. All right, thank Staff. You. Good morning, Chairman, Board Members, Staff. My name is Kevin Oatman. I'm with Development Services, and unfortunately, I have not been sworn in. Oh. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> so. is, is, is there anybody else out there that has not been sworn in yet that would like to be sworn in to speak? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Lopez pretty much summarized the basic and the full details that you would need for this proposal. Again, this is for rezone from A to PDR with the future land use of UF3. Um, she covered, again, most of the ideas of what she's wanting to propose. Let me go ahead and do this for you. Let's see. There, um, to reiterate the idea that they do have a specific approval for the second yard for quarter lots, reducing it to 10 feet. That's a common thing that we've done, so it's nothing you know new or unique. That's the only special approval they uh, are requesting. Uh, I thought I had a better slide. The third slide shows you a better idea of the residential dwellings surrounding the proposed area. 
while she, uh, Ms. Lopez had mentioned that there are other subdivisions and PDR subdivisions in the area, I just wanted to kind of illustrate that the residents to the west are shown on the graphic on the far right, and that kind of gives you an idea where the proposed access that they believe, or um, excuse me, proposed down there to the south, it is not adjacent to any drives at this point. Again, they are flexible on the option of where they are providing that access, but at FSP level, we'll be able to give you further details on that. But that's pretty much all I have wanted to point out at this time. Again, Ms. Lopez did a good job on presenting what they're wanting to propose. All right, thank that's you. That's my conclusion. Thank you, sir. Is there any questions of staff? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. At this point, we'll open it up for public comment on this item. Is there anyone who'd like to come forward and speak on item number 16? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, is there any other, any other questions of staff or the applicant? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and ask for staff. You got anything else? You good? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Lopez, you good? All right. Thank you very much. All right, we have a motion that has been made by Commissioner Turner and seconded by Commissioner Satcher to um, please cast your votes now. And the motion carries five to one with Commissioner Van Ostenbridge voting no and Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. Ms. Knapp, can you read item 17 into the, into the record, please? Item 17 is PDR 2328ZP, Palm View, P. Crawl. And um, this is a rezone of approximately 20.46 acres, generally located at the northwest corner of the intersection of US 41 and 16th Avenue East, also known as Canal Road, Palmetto, from agricultural, suburban, coastal planning area overlay to planned development, residential, uh, retaining the coastal planning overlay. Retain, um, and approving a preliminary site plan for 264 multifamily attached residential dwelling units. And your staff presenter is Barney Salmon. All right, thank you, ma'am. Has there been any ex parte on this item? All right, seeing none, thank you very much. Applicant, you're up. Mr. Barnaby. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. Mr. Mr. Chair, I apologize. Um, I do need to disclose ex parte about a year ago, Mark, probably. Yeah. Probably about a year ago, uh, Mr. Barnaby came and showed talked to the, about this particular site with me. Um, I honestly don't even really remember. <laughs> I, I, I remember the site because it was a very troubled site and there weren't really any options for you there. But apparently you, you think you found one. Um, so I don't really don't remember the details of the discussion, but I do remember that we discussed it. Yeah, I, I had the same okay. meeting conversation. All right, Madam Attorney. I'm saving. Oh, no, do we need uh, to disclose we have any issues or anything? No, it might have been before it was even filed. It, okay. It was. Right. Okay. So right. it's not cool. technically ex parte, but it's good to disclose it anyway. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Mr. Barnaby. Good morning again. Uh, this is uh, Palm View uh, Apartments. This is a P. Crawl and Tam Lake. Uh, I represent both of them, and this is our project team. I'll uh, add them. Uh, P. Cal with Paul P. Crawl, uh, myself, uh, Matt Morris, and Bob Grusa with Kim Lee Horn. And they are all somewhere around here and able to answer questions. This is a request uh, for uh, to rezone the property from Ag uh, Suburban, which is A1, to Plan Development <coughs> Residential, uh, and to approve a preliminary site plan for a 264 multifamily uh, residential unit development with an amenity center and associated infrastructure. This site is approximately 20 acres. Uh, the future land use category is ROR. Uh, we have, uh, as we talked about, 264 multifamily dwelling units. We are preserving 67% of the open space on this site. There's, this, and we'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. And our access uh, is off of Palm View and Canal Roads. Uh, we do have buffers, and the buffers all meet ca uh, county standards. This is the site in big terms. Uh, this is an aerial of this, uh, this location. Um, in general terms, and as you can see, it's in the north part of the county. This is a more uh, focused aerial, um, and it provides a, a good location. You can see the uh, wetland, which is about a seven-acre wetland on the site, in the center of the site, which, which is um, 
you know, a, a, a challenge for this site. Uh, but we are not impacting the wetland um, or, or impacting the wetland buffers on this site. Uh, you can see that this is uh, along a major arterial in the county, US 41. Uh, also Canal Road, which is 16th Avenue East and 61st Street, all collector roads under your comprehensive plan. And on top of that fund, we get the CSX Railroad to our west. So uh, this is a very uh, unique site in the county. Uh, here's the uh, comprehensive plan designations. As you can see, all the designations in this area are Res 6 or higher in intensity. Uh, we are ROR, which allows for a significantly higher intensity than what we're proposing, um, as well as you have Res 9 uh, to our to our east, or excuse me, to our west and to our south, um, and ROR to our west and to our south. This is the zoning. You can see it's kind of a mix of zoning in this area. The A1 is historic for this area, going way back to the first time that the county had zoning in the area. Um, but you see the uh, the uh, mobile home park to the to the west. Uh, to the north uh, is an RV park. Uh, there are, is directly to our north is one residential uh, uh, house and a nursery. Uh, the NCM was rezoned uh, several years ago. Um, it's currently vacant, and then we have a church to our south. This is the proposed site plan for this project. Uh, as was indicated, it's multifamily. Uh, it, we have set the buildings back significantly from the roadways. Uh, that is intentional. In fact, we only have one that is not separated by a parking, one building that's separated by a parking lot. You can see the stormwater uh, pond uh, to the east, and there's also a smaller one to the west in the northwest corner. There's an amenity center in the northwest corner that's kind of in purple. Uh, it will have a pool, uh, playground area, um, also some, some storage area, and, uh, and some rooms for uh, expected to hold various things. That'll be determined based on what we expect the uh, the uh, residents will, will want in that area, how that all plays out. There's also a dog park. If you look at building number four, you can see that just to the north of building number four there, kind of light green color. Uh, as I indicated, the wetland area uh, is totally being preserved. There's no impact on the wetlands. And uh, we do have a very nice buffer uh, with the railroad track to the, to the west. Our planning commission recommendation was 7-0 in favor of approval. And we, uh, we believe this request is very consistent with your comprehensive plan, and we're requesting approval for the rezone and the preliminary site plan. And we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't have enough for get you on the board. Can I go without being on the board? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, one quick question. So yes, um, you have sat back the buildings from Highway 41. I think there's a 200-foot rule with the sound mitigation, but with it being concrete or if it's a lake, are, are there any plans maybe with additional wall insulation or upgraded windows for those new residents? We, we, we have to establish through building design that the, the sound attenuation is, a, is accomplished within the building. So, yes, that will be something that we'll have to look at at, at FSP and, and moving forward. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions of the applicant? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Staff, you're up. I'm um, Barney Sam for staff, and I have been sworn. And there is, uh, Commissioner, there is something in, in the, uh, we have that they, once during the final site plan review, that they meet, a, attenuate a certain reduced sound, and they're aware of that, because this is in the entrance way along US 41, so that's something kind of common. Um, thank, thanks for the great, great um, presentation. I'm just, br I'll briefly do, go through mine here. Is this right? Let me just make it the right button. I don't even see these. Um, Future land category. Oh, the um, the density is much. The gross density I think is allowed 16. They're like 12.6, so it's below that below that threshold. Um, this is an, another map showing the um, location of the uh, the five buildings, and these are the access points. There is one on. There's emergency access on US 41, only for emergency use only. And this is something that came up um, at the Planning Commission. Um, uh, the driveway was further to the east, and there's a, there's a house. I don't think there's a pointer here. But there's a house to the, uh, so you see where that yellow um, arrow is. Just to the left, you see there's a small single family house to the left of that arrow, or west. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, right there. They moved the driveway to the east to avoid any kind of interference with light if you leave at night. Um, where that arrow is pointed is a nursery. Um, there also um, there is a school less than two miles to the uh, west. It's an elementary, and so we'll be working on the details of providing um, access to the uh, school via these the sidewalk and this cross crosswalk here at this at the rail at the rail um, the rail line. And this is kind of this is as you go further to the um, west. This is Palmview, and you can see uh, Bayshore Road there. So we'll work get work out the details of the final site plan um, with the applicant on this. And this is my uh, my free my freehand line. Excuse for that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good artist. My daughter didn't do that. And that's where it'll connect there to the sidewalk. And to the left, right there, you can't see the school, but it's right there to the left um, of of uh, on the green area. Any comments? Any questions? Questions. Say none. Thank you, sir. Thanks much. Now we'll do is we'll open up this item for public comment. If you when you if you are going to speak for public comment, come down. You have three minutes. Um, recognize you have been sworn. State your name and your county residence. I have two speakers. I have Larry Jeffries. Yes, sir. Come on down. Good morning. Uh, my name is Larry Jeffries. Uh, I'm a resident of Manatee County all my life. And uh, I just had a couple uh, issues that I'd like to address. Uh, one, as you can see in the picture, this is my home. And this is at the end of Canal Road, at this road that we're talking about. Uh, so drainage is certainly an issue for me. This has only been happening probably within the last five to ten years. A lot of construction in our area with RV parks. Uh, we've got mobile home parks. And this is the main canal for the whole area. And every time something gets built, I get more water. Uh, what's happening is the water is coming in, with, and there's a tide. There's a creek. McMullen Creek's right behind my home. Uh, and, and this is what's, I mean, I, I've been there for almost 50 years. So I've seen the changes. This is not something I'm just looking at and saying, well, you know, this is something new. For 40 years, I haven't seen any of this. Now, all of a sudden, I'm starting to, it, it came within two inches of coming in my home. My whole backyard, the, 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 my sheds, everything was under two foot of water. I was out there trying to save my stuff. This is, this is an issue for this drainage. Getting the county to keep this area clean, it takes me a year just to get them to come out to clean this ditch out. I'm not sure it's all, all this construction's fault as, as it is a lot of faults. However, as you can see, I have some serious concerns about it. Uh, I hope you take this into consideration and maybe give me some help somewhere along the line. Uh, and, and, and the other issue is the uh, traffic. The traffic getting out onto 41 right now, it takes me sometimes 15 minutes to get out onto the road. Can you imagine 200 more cars coming out there? There's no red lights, no anything there. I understand that there may be a red light eventually, which would certainly help. But that's still a lot of traffic for a little bitty road like that. Those are my concerns, and if you got any questions. Yes, sir. Um with this picture, mm -hmm. where's the canal behind your house? Is it where the palm trees are? It's under the water there on the right. Okay. Right. See the palm to, I, tree? It's all water, so I'm just trying to get an idea where the canal's at. No, this is fresh water mainly, but uh, the salt water does back up to it. Okay. But what's happening is there's so much influx of water from this and also from the other, like the RV parks, different like that. They fill up the canal, I mean the creek behind my house, and that backs up to this water coming into it. Uh, it, it, it's never been an issue in the past, but now it's, it's becoming an issue every year. I've had that happen to me twice this year, or last year, I mean. And we, I've never had that before. Now, all of a sudden, it's getting close. So with you, the, if it keeps coming, and I understand there's going to be a, uh, excuse me, go ahead. Do you back up to McMullen? Yes. Okay. I'm looking at the map now. I'm just... 
That was my only question. Okay. Sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Next up is uh, I have Larry G. That's all I have. <laughs> if Larry G. would come down. Please state your name, county residence, and you have been sworn. You have three minutes, sir. Larry Gabbard, uh, resident of Manatee County, have been sworn. Um, same issues as my na neighbor there. Uh, 264 multi-family fam units, probably a high, high probability of, of kids, and I'll address the uh, walk to school here in a few, uh, minute. 500-plus uh, vehicles, most likely, because it's multi-family, so uh, most families have two cars now, minimum. If they have teenagers, they may have three. So you're adding that to what the previous speaker just said to get out. Canal Road is not even wide enough for two, barely wide enough for two cars to get by. Normally, one has to pull over on the side to get through. If a truck comes by, you got to stop and let the truck go through. So we're, it may be called a collector road, but it's a country road. Uh, <clears throat> there's no traffic signals at any intersection to get in or out of that area. That includes uh, US 19 and 41. Um, there's no street lights for children walking to school during the hours uh, of darkness or uh, coming home in darkness. Uh, no direct, direct route for kids to walk or ride bikes to school. Uh, I know that uh, in the diagram it shows a sidewalk. That is a sidewalk to nowhere. It doesn't go to the railroad track and it doesn't go to Bayshore Road. It ends way before that, about approximately 100 foot before the railroad, and approximately 100 foot it deads into a, a chain link fence before it gets to um, Bayshore Road. Kids would have to cross that road to go to school and back six times. They would have to cross the road. That would be crossing Palm View twice, crossing either uh, Bayshore, uh, and then crossing Bayshore three times down, and then coming home, they'd have to do the same thing. So you would have to have crosswalks, not to mention they have to navigate that heavily used railroad track twice also. Now, um, the drainage, again, the water flows north through that canal, right down to my neighbor's house and to our house, that canal flood, uh, overflows. And the road is also, that road has been eroded several times in the past, Canal Road, and the county has had to come out and reinforce it to keep it from caving in on the side. So I expect that's gonna be a, a more problem. Uh, rec space for families. I heard them say that they had a little playground there. Where are the kids? I mean, you could have 100 kids in there, easy, with this complex. Where are they gonna ride bikes? Out on the main roads? Now we've changed the collector road into a major highway with 500 more cars. Um, where are they gonna ride their bikes? Where are they gonna walk? Where's the families gonna walk? Where are they gonna play? They all go in the playground. Uh, there's a dog park and a pickleball court there. That's what I understand. Um, there's no fence planned for the west side of the uh, site that borders the railroad tracks, just a natural landscape. Um, I guess I'm through here. Yes, sir, thank you very much for your thank comments. You all. Thank you. Are there any other citizens like to come forward and speak on this item during public comment? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Are there any questions for staff or? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, stormwater, we'll start with stormwater. Oh, oh Denise. <laughs> okay, where's Tom when you need him? No one jumped up, so here comes Denise. Um, <laughs> so I, I recently inherited this area into my district, uh, but then boom, we had Hurricane Ian and, and I was out there and I got a crash course in the, we, we do have inferior infrastructure in this general area, I would, I would say. I think that's fair to, to say that. Rabonia um, community has been sort of the loudest. I think they're just the most organized in the area. Um, so I've spent majority of my time there working with them, but these other outlying parcels are affected by the same problems as that Rabonia is affected by. So could you talk to us about, start with stormwater, and then maybe maybe give us the difference, explain the difference between rising water, falling water, you know, sort of give us the layout here, and then explain how this would be impacted and what the, the, the applicant is required to do with their stormwater. Okay. Denise Greer for staff, and I have been sworn. So unfortunately, we do not have a county model in this area um, of the McMullen Creek area. 
Um, like you said, there it is tidally influenced, um, and so they will need to model the ditch that they tie into and establish um, the 100-year elevation in the ditch adjacent to their project, and they will have to utilize that in their stormwater model. They do have 100-year floodplain on site. Um, right now, it's localized to their wetland, so unless their model shows that the elevation is actually outside of the wetland boundaries on their site, um, they wouldn't be required per se to require any floodplain mitigation or, sto or, or storage. So they are looking at um, providing the necessary models um, down the ditch to McMullen Creek, which does have 100-year um, flood elevations established for it, but not up the ditch coming to their site. So they'll have to establish those in their stormwater model. So they are they are using the wetland for stormwater storage then? Um, they'll have to speak to that. All What I meant was... And how's this? They can. They could. Okay. Yes, they could model it. Um, and they'll also have to look at that elevation to see if the floodplain actually extends out of what FEMA has on their maps. Okay. You might as well stick around because my next question okay. is you're going to know the answers to as well. And we do have, um, I could have Jenny pull up if you want to see where the floodplain is with relationships to Mr. Jeffrey's uh, property. They are in the 100-year floodplain. Um, I did talk to his wife um, last week, and they do have a concern about the ditch. She did say that it takes them, they have to schedule it because they have to use special equipment to clean the ditch. So I don't know if that's something we could get on a regular maintenance for them. We've, we've been, yes, the answer is, the short answer is yes. It just takes money, by the way, everyone. Um, but, but that's something we've been, I've been in contact with Public Works because my district is the coastal district and that mm -hmm. we tend to have these, these problems disproportionately. Um, so yes, we will, we'll look at that. We'll look at that. Um, his, the flooding issue there is primarily falling freshwater, not rising saltwater. So that's probably, um, well, that's, I, I haven't seen his site, but based on his discussion, that's what he, that's what he has said. So it's probably the ditch does need to be cleaned out. Maybe we need to look at, maybe there's a pipe that needs to be upsized. Okay. Next question is, there's, I mean, it's going to become an apartment complex. Let's just speak in plain terms here. Um, you're going to have younger, you're going to have families in here. Palm View is a direct line from this site, but it does not have a, contigu a continuous sidewalk all the way to Palm View. Um, he's right. You would have to cross what I would call active railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. It is. Um, probably the most active railroad track in the county, actually. Um, so you would have to cross the railroad track, and then they would have to cross the road, cross Palm View, to access sidewalk, go down, and then cross again, and then cross again. So there are one, two, three each direction, three times they have to cross the road, plus they have to cross the railroad tracks. I don't believe this, is this track signalized, this crossing right here? It is? So at least the track is signalized. Um, oh. Beyond that. No, I don't think the signal, no, it is yeah, not. I didn't think it was either, but he nodded. So then I No, I, it is I, not. I, thought, I didn't know then. No, okay. I know. It's not signalized. Hey, please he is flashing. Uh, so he has flashing. Please from the, the audience. It's signalized in terms of having flashing lights, but there's no mast arm that Correct. comes down. Um, is that a conversation we can have with CSX? We already have um, the applicant and staff. I've sat in on the meetings that we've had so far, um, and they are progressing to get that permit to cross the tracks. I don't think um, they will based on this project, we'll add the arms. I think that would be a bigger discussion with the county um, to get those arms in there. Okay. But, and we've also been working with the staff, like uh, Barney's presentation showed, to get them to extend past the code requirement of 1,000 feet from their site to make the connection down at Bayshore. Okay. The, the applicant will be required to place a sidewalk on Palm View the, the extent of their frontage on Palm View, correct? And within a thousand feet of their site, which will take them across the railroad track to tie into the sidewalk that has been recently placed with the surf, correct? The RV park. What I would love to see is 
if you say within a thousand feet of their site, could we possibly require not just I know it's probably not in this meeting, but could we possibly require them to extend the sidewalk a full thousand feet from their site on their side of Palm View and then the county? Would the, if it doesn't reach Bayshore Road, then we would come in and connect from Bayshore Road to you know however far the, to their thousand foot range. Is that something that we could work out? I'll defer to Ms. Shank. We're allowed to require them to tie in with in a thousand feet and so technically then it's on the north side so technically we can have them tie in there unless they proffer okay to do that well the applicant will be up here next so maybe i'll have that conversation with the applicant um because i i would really like to see the sidewalk run alongside the mobile home park all the way to bayshore road to eliminate i mean the kids already have to cross a, a live railroad track um and they're gonna have to cross bayshore road but at least there's a crossing guard there so mm -hmm. I'm just trying to limit the number of times the kids have to cross the road. Um, and just so I systems. understand, you would like them to extend it a thousand feet on the south side of Palm View, correct? Across the railroad right. track, right? And then assuming it comes up short of Bayshore Road, which it likely will, then we would come in and and fill in the gap, if that makes okay. sense. Does that make sense, Ms. Shank? Well, the applicant can ask for a reimbursement agreement with the county to course share mm. on the nice. south extension. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the, and the last thing, and this is not, thank you, Denise. Mm -hmm. This is just a comment to my fellow board members. So some of you are blessed to certain parts of the county. You have clubhouses and gated communities, and there are playgrounds within all these communities. And, and I, I am going to point fingers. When, when I was a kid, when, when, you have two clubhouses, right. Um, when I was a kid, I grew up in Northwest Bradenton. I had a wonderful childhood. We went to Stewart Elementary or Palmasola Elementary, and we played on the playground, and we utilized those taxpayer-funded facilities that my parents paid for. And after hours and on the weekends, we were allowed to use them and play on them. Sure, there's going to be a little playground here. I get it. That's, you know, good community amenity. Appreciate that. But this is an example of if we're going to have a whole bunch of families come in here, and Palm View is literally at the end of the road for those kids to go down there to, and the school district locks up their grounds after hours and kids are not allowed to utilize the playgrounds which their parents tax dollars are paying for It is a taxpayer asset uh, I just bang my head against the wall with school board members when I talk to them about it um, I feel like they should be open and available outside of school hours for kids to to utilize um, and I just want to pass that on because I don't believe I've ever had the conversation with any of you but it's something that behind the scenes I talk to the school district about constantly um, and I get a bottomless pit of excuses, um, and, and I'm, I'm going it, to voice main, it. I'm going to voice it now in a live meeting. Is the main concern vandalism? Is that is that what they're looking at? Oh, vandalism, trash. You know, I was saying, welcome to owning public assets and providing for the community. That's that's what it's all about. You know, every single park, every single morning, we go out and we check for vandalism and trash. That's that's the way it works when you serve the public. Later, if you made a motion to write a letter on behalf of the board to the school board requesting that, I would 100 percent agree with that. And sign wonderful. It. I appreciate that. All right. Do you want to do that in your? Comments? Well, we'll do that in commissioner comments at the end. We'll allow right. to continue the applicant. Make sure you do that. All right. Is that a commissioner? That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions of uh, staff or staff closing comments? You've already spoken, sir. I can't bring you down again. Thank you. Um, any closing co uh, staff closing comments? All right. Thank you. Applicant rebuttal. Let me address a couple of, of things real quickly. Um, the can you put my screen back up, my uh, presentation back up, please? Hey. Okay, nope, that's not it. Okay, All right. let me let me talk about a couple of things real quick. Um, <clears throat> Um, well, let me go to the, the easy one first. Slow process. I want to talk about, th this doesn't show very well, but it sort of shows. All right, so um, I want to talk about the, we did have one comment at, at our neighborhood meeting relating to the driveway. As you can see, the, the, the one property owner to the west, uh, to the north, and sort of to the west of our site, is, uh, has a driveway there. Our original driveway was actually in alignment with that driveway, um, and so we moved it uh, approximately 70 feet to the to the east, and so now it does not go into that 
that person's driveway, it moves to the, to the west. Excuse me, it moves to the, to the, uh, na the nursery to the north. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to have uh, Matt Morris come up here and talk about the drainage for a second. Let me talk about the sidewalk for a moment. We do have a stipulation in there to extend the sidewalk. I don't see any, I don't think our client has any problems with it, it, running it along the southern property line. The big issue is the, is the railroad track. Uh, there are some significant, uh, uh, there are some questions about the improvements that are required there. Uh, obviously, we may need some assistance on that to keep it reasonable uh, in price. Uh, just because of the age of the railroad track, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so, uh, but with that, uh, certainly we can run, we're more than happy to run the, the sidewalk on our side of the road um, on 61st up and to that area. There may be a, we may have to do some striping on the roadway to, to address that issue. Um, and with that, uh, Matt, when you want to come and talk just briefly about the drain. Good morning, Matt Morris with Morris Engineering. I've been sworn. Um, to kind of piggyback, and Denise, I think, did a pretty good job of explaining the drainage. I think one of the advantages we've got to keep the drainage functioning um, and not exacerbate any of the problems that are out there now is the fact that we are actually uh, keeping this entire wetland, which, as Denise said, all the floodplain really, at least the mapped floodplain at this point, we'll have to model it and verify that is contained within the wetland. Uh, so the fact that we're not impacting that, we're still going to get the benefit of having that storage uh, within the wetland. So to your point, uh, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge, we're, while we're not necessarily, uh, per, we're not going to be treating any storm water in the wetland, we do get the benefit of still maintaining that, that volume of water that can be stored in the wetland. We will have on-site stormwater treatment, stormwater attenuation ponds. Uh, we're also going to be doing some swales uh, on our site to be able to collect the water before it discharges into the wetland to both provide the treatment and uh, limit the amount of water that's going into the wetland because the wetland is really, you know, the wetland connects to those off-site uh, facilities. We also don't have a problem working with uh, Denise. We've done it on other projects, working with county staff. Uh, once we get that model uh, designed, it's easy for us to go in and run a few what-if scenarios to Denise's point. We can uh, look at, okay, if we... If we increase the size of this pipe in the ditch from a you know 36 inch pipe to a 40 inch pipe, here's here's what those uh, what that does, how that may help. Uh, we can also model some different uh, what they call roughness co roughness coefficients within the ditch. Obviously, we'll model it based on existing conditions, but okay, here's what it looks like when it's not mowed and maintained, and here's what it does look like when the banks are maintained a little better. Um, so that the county has some of that information even for the off-site uh, portions of our site to be able to help uh, look at maintenance and things like that. So um, we've done that on other projects before. We've run some different scenarios uh, for staff through our models. So uh, we're happy to do that, but we are providing uh, for the attenuation and the treatment of the stormwater on our site even before it gets into the wetland and then having the benefit of maintaining that entire wetland and not having any impacts to it that will help with the, the stormwater from our site as well. You get. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to take myself down. Okay. So my only real question. I mean, I, I knew the answer to stormwater. I, I wanted the the residents to hear the answer to stormwater from engineers like yourself and staff. Um, that's why I asked the question on the on the issue of the sidewalk. Uh, I, I don't want to sit here and hash out the details of of the deal. I mean. Matt owns a business in, in the county, and you're a native, Mark. So, I mean, if, if you guys will agree here that you'll work with us uh, in sort of a public-private way to, to extend the sidewalk on the south side of Palm View all the way to Bayshore Road, we'll figure out the, the, cross, the crossing of the tracks. Uh, if you guys will agree to that, then, then I'm happy. Uh, we have no objection to that at all, and uh, certainly we're willing to work. I, by the way, I assume, Denise, we've got adequate right-of-way on the south side of of Palm you to make that work. It would be contingent on right of way, obviously. Yes. Uh, yeah, I figured you just that, want that's to take our somebody's problem. property. Yeah. So uh, that's fine. Yes, we're, we'd be more than happy to do that. Thank you. Is that it? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, sir. All right. All right, any other any deliberations or any other comments by the board? All right, thank you. I'm looking for, oh, here we, okay, here we go. Commissioner Satcher. Well, I think maybe I'll have, might be out of order, but to just have staff address the general 
rule with stormwater that's going to have to be followed here. Um, as far as what has to be held on site and, you know, whether or not things end up worse or better off or the same. Um, because I, I think the, the resident might be on to something if there's an issue. I mean, I know the timing is suspicious with there is building in that area. But if I understand what our engineers tell us, you know, month in, month out, week in, week out, it would probably be because we need to clear that canal, not necessarily because of the building. Or am I wrong? Let me know. Let us know. It may be a combination of both. Um, I can get with stormwater and utilities to see if they've studied this area. But like I said, we don't have our own stormwater model in this area. Um, and because we don't have that, there, there also is no... Um, the pre the pr on in the staff meeting there's a really lengthy discussion about stormwater i'm not sure if you saw that it's on the very last page that tells all the different um uh floods that or um rainfall events that they'll have to study and um item number three under stormwater is that they'll have to submit the drainage modeling to demonstrate the allow allowable pre-developed rate discharge has been reduced by 50 percent for mcmillan creek watershed so it is a watershed that we've designated that the pre-developed discharge or the post-developed discharge will have to be reduced 50 percent from the pre so the the discharge that this site itself discharges is going to be calculated to be 50 percent less than go than discharges at present time so you're saying less water from this how, from this how many development acres? only right from this site it's going to put less water into that creek correct 50 percent than correct. it does currently correct the discharge will have to be reduced by 50 percent for a 25-year storm for on a 25-year yeah. storm thank you is that it sir yeah and, and i mean we need to look at uh canal at getting that canal cleared out if that's the issue so we need to put some hurry up on that but that's all all right thank you sir uh commissioner cruz yeah i just want to say for delivery i i love this project i loved it when i saw it and reviewed it um you know, it's a complicated site um there's a lot of dynamics to it i think commissioner Van Osridge pointed them out well that there are some things that need to be looked at but what you did in terms of getting to the appropriate density effect slightly under the appropriate density not touching the wetlands being very thoughtful with your site plan i think this is a, a great project it's it's a great location for the project and you know from what you've done so far i, I trust you'll be able to work out some of the issues that were presented from this board so uh i, I just i fully support it and i thank you for putting it together all right thank you sir all right i'm looking for a motion all right. Motion has been made by uh, Commissioner Van Ossenbridge, seconded by Commissioner Cruz. Is everyone can pass their, or cast their votes right now? And the motion carries five to one with Commissioner Bearden voting no and Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Ms. Knapp, can you read number 18 into the record, please? Number 18 is LDCT 2312 Ordinance 2407 County Initiated Land Development Code Text Amendment Food Trucks. So this is amending the Land Development Code Chapters 2, which is definition, Chapter 4, which is zoning, and Chapter 5, which is standards for accessory and specific uses and structures, and also Chapter 10, which is transportation management. And this is to define the use of food trucks, to add food truck units as an accessory and temporary use, to add food truck parks as a use in specified zoning districts, to set forth specific use criteria for food truck units, food truck parks, and applicable parking standards. And your staff presenter is Charles Andrews. Thank you, ma'am. And we are finally glad that the food trucks are coming <laughs> forward. So, Charles, you're up. All right, well, food trucks are back, uh, commissioners. So, Charles Andrews with staff here. Thank you, commissioner and, and chairman. So, let me get the PowerPoint up real quick. Okay, so. The last time the board saw this was back in February 22nd, or February 22 of 2024. And let me go right here. So what's changed? So real quick, the only change that we have had here are, is the adjustment in terminology from mobile vending to food trucks, and this is to match Florida statute regarding mobile food dispensing vehicles. 
And then we revised the definition of food trucks to mirror Florida statute, and then the definitions provided below. Um, and then that's essentially what we had. The background's all the same here. We've had an increase in inquiries regarding food trucks, food truck parks. Uh, like I said, we currently don't have anything on the books for them, so we're trying to get this language on here. Um, and there's several changes here, chapter two, chapter four, and then chapter five, we have the three different scenarios here. And, and real quick, I just wanted to go to the dot cam here. One thing that came out that we are going to adjust, and this is for the first reading, this is there's no action on this, so the second reading would be for adoption in May. So real, oh, that's not, why is that not looking, hold on, why is that looking whited out? <laughs> okay, here. It's adjusting, just leave it still for a second, Charlie. Y you want him to zoom a little closer? Can you, I'm sorry, can you zoom in a little bit where my finger is here? Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, does go. that look better, better, better? Bueller, Bueller, okay. So under this section here, under temporary, uh, we're going to have a little language in there that's be kind of tweaked and it'll basically say that uh, within the off-street parking area or area designated by the property owner for a recreational facility uh, to provide uh, a food truck in that area. So we just didn't want to limit, we wanted to have a little more flexibility. So if a, if a park wanted to have a food truck there, they weren't limited just within the off-street parking area. However, that wouldn't preclude them uh, from obfuscating the part here in Part B, real quick here, just regarding that they couldn't be in a handicapped space or in a drainage area. Just if there's some open space or something they had to kind of shift the food truck to, we would have some language that's going to be added under D4 there under that section. So that's essentially what we're looking at. Everything's the same uh, that you folks have seen, so I'm here if you have any questions. Mr. Cruz. So just to clarify, because I actually looked at that this morning to see if it was yes, an update. The additional language is about our conversation yesterday rel uh, on the briefing because, you know, th as a proof of point, I talked about Premier. We do a lot of tournaments there, and there's a good five food trucks out in the middle of the soccer fields. They can't park in our parking because we don't have enough parking for them, and we don't want kids running through a parking lot. So that's the intent of this new language. Yes, sir. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions of Charles? All right. Thank you very much. There's no Thank action you. needed on this item. So, and then uh, you're, you're bringing it back in what May? May second, Commissioner. That, right. And that's item number 19, is sir. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was just wasn't a date. All right. So I can read 19 and. Can you read 19 in? Yep. 19 is LDCT 2312 Ordinance 2407. County Initiated Land Development Code Text Amendment regarding food trucks, and this is the request to hold the second public hearing in May. Uh, prior to five o'clock. All right, thank you. All right, there's a motion on the board. Uh, motion's been made by Commissioner Cruz, second by Commissioner Turner. If everyone could cast their votes now. And the motion carries six to zero with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Well, I'm glad that food trucks are coming back. <laughs> you know, it's been, it. a, been a while we've been working on this. All right, moving on to the next item. Um, County Attorney, do you have any comments? All right, Ms. Ms. Knapp, do you have any closing comments? No, Mr. Chair. All right. Is there any other commissioner agenda items that anybody would like to bring forward? All right, we're going to move on to commissioner. Agenda items or just comments in general? It says commissioner, yeah, commissioner agenda item comments or whatever. We might as well do yours first. Yeah, well, I'm going to let, I'm gonna let uh, Commissioner Van Osterbridge go ahead and do his. Okay, thank you. So, um, start with the easy one. So, as I said before, I'll try to be a little more articulate and less off the cuff. Um, Historically, um, elementary schools particularly have been, uh, the campuses have been open to the public after hours, you know, nights and weekends, evenings and weekends, I should say, not nights, but evenings and weekends. And, um, you know, I, I grew up here and that was a place that we spent an awful lot of time playing at Stewart Elementary. And obviously in, in every barrel, there's a few bad apples, right? And I know kids, people will leave trash behind and sometimes kids will do foolish things. I get it. Um, but... I think it's a much safer, more controlled environment for kids to be playing on a playground, on playground equipment. Um, I looked at Palm View, because this was the school that we just discussed, and I look at the aerial, there's a basketball court, there's a baseball backstop, there's a playground, and there's tennis court, all in, all in one location. They're all taxpayer funded facilities. And, and again, I understand people tend to leave trash behind, that sort of thing, it costs additional money, but we're all in the service of the public. That's our jobs. Uh, you know, we couldn't keep parks open if we use the same, um, you know, the same, the same mentality, obviously. Um, 
we're sort of constantly dealing with small vandalism and damage and injuries and that sort of thing at parks. That, that's the nature of public service. That's the nature of owning public assets. But these schools are literally public assets. And personally, I think that they should be open on weekends and after hours, they should be left open. Tennis courts, basketball courts, playgrounds, the works. Um, so I'm just, I'm looking for support from the board to, to direct the chair to pen a letter uh, to Chairman Choate at the school board, you know, politely asking that they consider making it an agenda item in a meeting and that they openly discuss it in one of their meetings. Second. So that's my motion. Second. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I 100% support this. I mean, let's remember the school board is going to be coming back to all the citizens, including elderly people who have kids aged out of school asking for an additional millage, this ballot initiative. I mean, you know, there, there should be use of these facilities. No one's asking to use the tennis and basketball courts at noon on a Tuesday while well, kids are in session. This is not a security thing. Uh, I am 100% in support of this. Thank you, sir. And um, I am 100% support also. So it's about time that they uh, let the kids use the playgrounds on Saturdays and Sundays and all that kind of you know, and even after school. So um, we have a motion um, by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge and a second by Commissioner Satcher. Um, and I'm oh, sorry, is there anybody for public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. The motion's on the board. If you cast your votes now. All right, thank you very much. Then the motion carries six to zero with uh, Commissioner Ballard being absent. All right, coming up next. Um, under my comments, I have two things. Um, one, we uh, it was brought up about 211. And we got some information down from Director DiPaolo on 211. Right now, we are funding $101,681 to the United Way Suncoast for 211. Um, the deep dive they did real quick was there are, there are a lot of organizations they refer to. Um, and I don't know, and we did pass an ordinance back in September of 23, that county funds should not be used to fund any agency requesting funding through the county's nonprofit application process who are affiliated with Planned Parenthood or any abortion provider or to otherwise fund any abortion services. Um, what I'd like to do is if it's the board's, um, privy to allow me to get with the county, uh, the county administrator and uh, director Apollo, and do a real deep dive and find out exactly where the well, how the funds are being dispersed, um, how much the United Way Sun Coast has to actually help fund these this two one one. I know that Sarasota County gets gives them about one hundred five to one hundred eight thousand for uh, for two one one also. So um, I'll take the board's direction on how they want to move it forward. Mr. Thatcher. I appreciate the issue being brought up um, you know, and what you just said, Mr. Chair. So I, I'm in total agreement. Uh, if we pass that ordinance in September, and I believe mo monies were probably dispersed in October, it might be something, you know, we might, yeah, it's violating the ordinance, and we they need to write us a check. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Commissioner good. Bearden. You guys know I support it, so that's all I got to say about that. One uh, one question. You know, one question I have is it's not maybe we're not necessarily funding something, but by referring by the sounds of it, we're supporting it. Can we dig into that? Yeah, I mean, you guys tell me what you want me to do, and I'll Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it does appear on its face to be in violation of county policy per this board, per every member of this board. Um, that said, you know, I'm, I'm looking through, and it looks like there's. I don't want to throw the baby necessarily out with the bathwater. So, yeah, I think a, a longer discussion and a, and a deeper dive into this and you bringing us some more information. And I think United Way, Suncoast, having the ability to come in here and, and speak to commissioners either one-on-one -on -one or, or in a meeting is probably a good idea because there are, there are good things that they're doing here, but, but we have a policy and, and county tax dollars should not go towards directing people to Planned Parenthood. All right. So, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, if your motion is to have the chair discuss this, then 100%. We should be auditing every dollar we put out this door for every nonprofit at, on a regular schedule. So I'm, I'm fully in support of that. Right. I'd be interested to see what you come back. Just remember, 211 is 
99.9% other things. Two on one is where an elderly person calls because they can't pay their electric bill and it's about to get turned off. Two on one is where kids who need third grade reading level call to get to get directed to free tutoring sessions. There's a lot of things two on one does and very, very little of it's this. And you can't just shut down an entire phone line over this. It's, it's not practical. Thanks, sir. Um, so, what I what I what I do at the board's direction is to do a, a real deep dive, find out the percentage of where calls are going, where they're coming from, um, or also look at the other municipalities around us. Are calls coming from the cities? To find out if we're funding all that too, or what their contribution is into the two one one system. So um, I don't know if we need a motion or just direction to me to just direct. Okay, uh, what I'll do is I will. Get with uh, the county administrator and uh, director uh, Apollo, and we will do a deep dive and bring it back at the next meeting. Is that good enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay, bring it back next board meeting. All right. Um, next up is our legislative priorities for DC, and we have uh, Deputy County Administrator Butterfield here to bring us bring everything forward on that. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. <clears throat> um, Andy Butterfield. One of your uh, deputy county administrators. Uh, the uh, annual uh, exercise where uh, uh, each uh, congressman uh, is generally allotted approximately $50 million for approximately five projects in the uh, federal earmark request process. Uh, the deadline is uh, probably going to come out in the next two weeks, so uh, I thought it would be a good uh, idea to. Uh, get a feel for uh, what we might ask for and I've got some proposals from the staff if you'd like me to just ge uh, gently uh, generally go over that uh, a couple of them are continuing projects of what we uh, received earmark uh, funding for uh, just we got the word for this FY uh, just a couple of weeks ago so we're starting that annual process again <clears throat> uh, the staff inputs were to recommend continuing uh, requesting for the Fort Hamer Bridge the Fort Hamer Roadway Project, the Greenway Gulf Coast Recreation Trail Partnership, the uh, War Memorial Park and Veterans Resource Center that we're uh, in the early stages of planning and building, uh, continuing uh, 15th Street East widening, and the Pierce Drainage Stormwater Project. And the, uh, the last one uh, idea was a De the DeSoto Bridge Water Main Replacement that uh, that's an old system and now that FDOT is uh, starting to plan in earnest uh, to replace that bridge, the uh, DeSoto Bridge, we uh, would now need to redo that line. So those are uh, seven suggestions. Um, as far as uh, strategy, we, uh, we could ask for seven and see if it's a bumper crop year or we could trim it down to five. I just uh, seeking your input at this point uh, in anticipation of uh, needing to put in the official earmark request to uh, Congressman Buchanan's, uh, Buchanan's office in, in probably the next 10 to 12 days. I think, sir. sir. Um, any discussion, any questions for Deputy County Administrator Butterfield with regards to what we're going to be asking for for, for our earmarks? Commissioner Turner? Yeah, I, I'm the newbie, so I have no uh, suggestions for that. So I'd like to hear from the board. Do we trim it down or do we go with those suggested items? Well, I think, I mean, where we're, where we're heading with this is that we, we consistently need money, of course, for Fort Hamer. And um, that's probably the number one. Um, one of our number one requests is for Fort Hamer. And then going down the list from there, um, the trail system, of course, is continued the trail system to Manatee County to connect with Sarasota and the county so north of us. Um, Representative Buchanan um, I've got a, I've got seems, to be, seems to be pretty good on that. So there's, I think, our, I think we're in a good place with our request um, where we're lined up um, with those. Um, it'll, can, can we just, so yeah. I can write all these down, can we just go through these yeah. in the order that we're planning? Sure. To? Okay, I'm, I'm a little more visual. <laughs> yes, sir, sir, I don't have anything visual prepared. Uh, uh. Okay, uh, Fort okay. Hamer Bridge, continuing uh, the, uh, the second bridge there, continuing design and, and construction, the Fort Hamer Roadway, uh, the Greenway Gulf Coast Recreation Trail Partnership, connecting uh, the counties, as the chairman mentioned, the uh, War Memorial Park uh, with the Veterans Resource Center, and uh, 15th Street East widening, mm -hmm. 
the Pierce Drainage Stormwater Project and the DeSoto Bridge Water Main Replacement. Mr. Chair, do you still need Pierce Drain? My, I got feedback no. that you don't. I think we could pull that off. I think we're at a good point with that. Okay, so we're going to eliminate Pierce, Pierce Drain and add DeSoto uh, Pipeline. That gives us uh, six we can put on the list, and then if uh, if they can get money for all six, great. If uh, if the uh, Congressman Buchanan's office advises, hey, which one do you really want? At some point during the year, you know, we could get more clarity on on where we are on each project and be able to give advice. So I, I think turning in the, the taking off Pierce and and turning in the other six would be, and I can flesh those out uh, and come back to the board for approval. Well, we got it. We're leaving next week, so yes, sir. Yeah. So we need we need to if we're going to vote we're... if we're going to formally vote on these in a motion, we need to do it today. Yes, sir. So um, nothing for District Three, but but actually, I don't have any objection to any of these on here, and, and yeah. nothing is nothing is coming to mind. Well, the the only other thing that I w I would say is after we vote on this, I think we should separately, George. Or James, you've been here a while. How, how, I believe be, be basically because we would vote on these before we leave, we're able to openly discuss them when we get up there. There's something legally like that. Does that sound accurate? <laughs> Put on your Bill Clay hat. I, I don't recall that. Um, I, we've Historically, what we've done is we've kind of preset who's taking what lead on each right. item, and then nobody else talks in the room except for the person talking about one item, so there's no open dialogue between everybody. Right, okay. So then what I'm getting at is um, I have some good conversations with Sheriff Wells, and he has some big asks. And I've, eventually I said, you know, why don't you, you – can, he can utilize Ballard, obviously. What's the point? Right hand pays the left hand. If he gets his own lobbyist, there's no point in that. So if he utilizes Ballard, he's going to put in a request with Vern for jail medical to help offset those costs, which I think is a smart idea. Um, and then we talked about at the state next year, the state level, um, there, there's a there's a want a need for some kind of a multi-use facility with EMS and MSO and parish that is hardened in a sort of a a, an e, a mini EOC, if you will, like an annex up north of the river, in the event that you couldn't access north of the river. Um, so he's going to do a state ask from from his department, so it doesn't count against what we're asking for. But if we're going up there, he's not going to go up there. Um, so I don't really want to put it on our list, but I would at least like to openly discuss being able to advocate for it when we're there on his behalf, since we are there and we do fund him. Um, do we want to vote on that separately? Do we need to vote on that at all? I mean, um, I heard for him to kind of, say, well, he's not our direct representative. I mean, he should probably feel that, or we should feel that out with Stuby, since he obviously has a connection through MSO. Um, True. I mean, he could certainly help yeah. move, move that along because those are both important and expensive. And, and you know, so I, I fully agree that he needs to ask for those, and we need to help facilitate him asking for those. But Stuby may be someone who can run with that a bit. Yeah, we do, do we do we have an issue though discussing it when we go up there without putting it in, in our packet? Discussing it when we go up there. I mean, advocating for him. I wouldn't. I mean, again, as long as you're not violating anything, I, I think we should because we're not really advocating for him. Like th that that combination MSO, you know, EMS, and I would argue fire station. I talked to Stacey and Mike about that kind of having these like joint set things. Possibly, I I, I expanded it because I pretend we have all the kinds of money, one in every kind of quadrant. You know, sure. working with Parish up there in North River, and then either Cedar or. or or West Bradenton on one side and east, and having kind of one of these mini command centers in each location, I think, is beneficial to everyone's safety. So I, I think we should advocate for it because it's as much a county thing as a Wells thing. Right. And the city is working on one like that at GT Bray in the old Red Cross building, which is hardened. Oh, yeah, 100%. Sure. And they bought it for pennies on the dollar. Was um, that a Fed money thing or? So he was going to go for, he was the, his plan was to go for state money for the parish facility. For jail medical, he was going to look for federal dollars. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think we need to, to vote on uh, – I don't think we need to vote on Sheriff Wallace's issue, but I think we need to bring it up uh, right. when we're up there. Okay. I don't think it needs to become part of our – on our written leave That's, behind. Yeah. But I think we need to, to work – you know, Stuby, who we're going to see, Vernon, who we're going to see. That's the clarity I was looking for. Yeah. And, you and can easily put on the bottom. Sometimes, remember, we used to do things sort of like how foster care first came up and affordable housing, Sadowski Fund. You can even have on there, you know, Manatee County 
the Board of County Commissioners fully supports the requests of the Manatee Sheriff's Office in Policy. support of, no, right, like, of medical like office yeah. and what Love that. and just put that on there so at least we're, we have a talking point to leave. Can on. you um can you can you put a quick email together to the Deputy County Administrator Butterfield uh, that uh, which was what you said? Sure. He wasn't writing it down, so. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's my understanding, uh, the, the conversation I believe the administrators had with the sheriff, that the sheriff would advocate for federal funds separately. But uh, we're putting the read ahead together. We're waiting on this discussion. Yeah. And but like Commissioner Cruz said, like I mean, that. as a policy statement from us on our lead behind, I think would be a, I think that'd be a good supporter for the sheriff. Yeah. So as a policy statement. All right. Um, and then we're moving forward with the other six items. Then. Yes, I would say yes. Unless... Anybody else got anything they want to pull down or add to the list? Okay. Okay. All right. So I guess we need a motion. Oh, wow. Clerk's got it. <laughs> I, I think it would just be to say that the uh, motion to approve those six uh, federal legislative items, I don't, I don't even need to put taking off Pierce Canal or to say this, the, the six, uh, six legislative priorities that. Staff recommends. Yeah, I think that, that's fine. I think that's fine. All right, so we have a, we have a motion by Commissioner Van Ossenbridge, a second by Commissioner Bearden. Can you cast your votes now? All right, the motion carries six to zero for our federal legislative priorities and with Commissioner Ballard being absent. Thanks, All right. Chairman. Is, is you good? Yeah. Yes, sir. If you All right. Are. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have anything good for the, or, of the for the order? Yes, Commissioner Cruz. It's two quick things. One, we talked about cleaning out canals earlier. You know, as we're getting into budget season, we should look at that. I mean, that's it's it's not free by any stretch, but I think dollar for dollar, it's one of the best ways we can be working on some of our flooding issues. When we had an issue with PAL flooding, we got somebody out there and cleaned those canals at, at a reasonable price, and it fix their flooding problem. I mean, we should be looking at that just like we do with paving over dirt roads and things like that. We should have a, a system in place, even if it's not our responsibility, because all their neighbors are our responsibility, and it's uh, a good use of money, I believe. Uh, second thing is we're still hearing a lot about the clear-cutting, the dust, clouds, and so forth. Um, I've been talking to Bellman Services about that. I, I think we have have some really good progress. I've, I've heard some really good proposals of, of trying to mitigate some of that in the future. Um, I'm just going to say because we talked about it. Uh, it, it'll be on the April 23rd agenda. Uh, so people know that it, this is being worked on. It's not being ignored. It's a, it's a serious problem in certain areas like Elcon at 64 and Moccasin Wallow. And uh, we're, we're cognizant of it, been working on it diligently. And uh, before the end of this month, there will be something coming back to this board. That's all. Good. Thank you, sir. All right. Anybody else have any comments, concerns, or like bring anything else forward for the board? We could say everybody else is good. I'm good. All right. Then we'll move to adjourn. Thank you very much.